What's up guys, it's Toby and I've got a pretty fun little video ready for you today. I'm not sure if I was able to convey the message in the title, so do apologize if I clickbaited you, but essentially I want to go through two topics in this video. First one is which white magic and rare items are worth picking up, like in general they're useful, why they're useful and you know just worth picking up. The second part is I'll do some comparisons, some mini tests to see whether actually those items are useful useful or is it kind of min maxing stuff. And by min maxing I mean something like you know a weapon that increases your damage by 1%. Is it helpful? Yeah, but does it actually feel helpful? Not really. Oh, and lastly, I do use quite a bit of hero editor in this video just because finding all those items for comparison's sake would take me an insane amount of time. So if you have a problem with it, come on, man, we're too old for this. Just give it a rest. Now I have to be honest with you guys, there's so much stuff I want to say in this video, so I'll put on these glasses so I can pretend that I'm looking into the camera, but I'll actually be reading everything off a script. So with that said, we can actually begin. And first topic is course wide items. So first of all, there are a couple that are pretty much no brainers, basically rune word bases. So, for example, Suwaya's for Chaos Rune Word are the best of the best, and if you ever plan on playing with a Whirlwind Assassin, it's like the most awesome build ever, you're looking for a claw with triple plus free skills. Best skills vary depending on the build you're going for, whether it's a hybrid with traps, whether it's a pure whirlwind, but to name a few, they would be Death Sentry, Lightning Sentry, Claw Mastery, Dragonfly, Venom, Weapon Block, and faith. Another white item worth picking up is a subscribe button or a Patreon pledge. For Amazons, it's either Grand Matron Bow or Matriarchal Bow. There are some subtle differences and I think depending on the gear, one or the other works better. Ideally, free bow skills is what you're looking for. 15 enhanced damage is pretty whatever, but I'll get back to that reason a bit later in this video. Lastly, we have Paladin Shields for Spirits and Exile. You're looking for Elite Shields and perhaps Royal Shield just because it has a very good defense to strength required ratio. But either way, what you want is high resistance, it's like 40% plus. For Spirit it's pretty easy to find, however for Exile it gets a bit more complicated because it has the indestructible mod. So if you want to take full advantage of it, what you want is an Ethereal Shield. Why that is? Because shields just like armors are eligible for e-bugging, which is, you know, pretty fucking significant. Though ironically for Paladin specifically, due to the massive boost uh, through Holy Shield, it's not as big of a deal. But with that said, we're getting into ethereal items. And here's the first test I wanted to show you. Whether it's worth bothering with ethereal armors and then e-bugging them to eke out an advantage. For those who don't know, e-bugging is adding sockets to an armor via Horadric Cube recipe, during which a bug occurs and the 50% bonus to defense coming from ethereal mod gets applied again, resulting in a massive defense increase. So, here's a test. I'll make three different stone armors and compare them. As you can see, I've got a bunch of armors prepared. First one is a normal four socketed Dusk Shroud, second with 15% ED, third one is Ethereal for e-bugging, and I did edit all of these armors with Hero Editor to make them all 100% identical. Now, the difference in defense is somewhat reasonable already, but if you put them on, the chance of being hit barely changes. So, let's e-bug one of them. And now we're looking at twice the defense, which already has somewhat of an impact if you just put it on yourself. But this is only where the good stuff starts. The entire 50% defense bonus from Ethereal bonus and another 50% defense bonus from e-bugging is both, they're both multiplied by any enhanced defense. So let's make Stone Rune Word into each of these free items.
Since stone can roll between 250 to 290 enhanced damage, a normal one can actually turn out with higher defense than a superior one. Just a fun fact, I suppose. Now, when you put them on, chance to hit is 52% for normal, 51% for superior, and 38% for inferior. 13% to me is a massive difference and pretty much enough to conclude that ethereal items are game changers indeed. Lastly for this test, say you're running Defiance Aura or another defense boost for your mercenary-like Barbarian Shout. So let me use my Holy Shield to visualize it. After using Holy Shield, now we're looking at 25% chance to be hit for normal, 24% for superior and 15% for ethereal. The gap has become a tad smaller due to diminishing returns in defense just like most of the stuff in Diablo 2, but it's still pretty significant nevertheless. So concluding ethereal items, I would say ethereal items are amazing, they're game changing, however superior items are just min-maxing and depending on the rune word you're using, they might in the end turn out to be even worse than normal ones. With that said, it does matter which armors you're picking up. Your best bets for rune words usually are based on their strength requirements. A not so well known fact though is that different armors have different movement speed penalties. Though with that said, it's more of a quality of life feature than something you should really pay attention to, especially with a teleporting character. So best ones usually are Archon Plate, Mage Plate and my personal favorite, Dusk Shroud just because it looks pretty fucking dope on most classes. So, moving on to other white items like helmets and shields, since we established that superior items barely add anything, I'd only suggest picking up helmets for e-bugging as well. Any elite helmet that can roll free sockets, so demon head, bone visage, corona and spired helmets are very similar for e-bugging and it just depends completely on how well they roll. So, let's move on to weapons. First one up is a like button or a Patreon play. For weapons just like armors you also have superior and inferior items, so let's run another test. So for mercenary I just found in my stash two different insights, one is an inferior pressure, another one is a normal one, a normal one boosts damage to 1.7 thousand, out of which roughly 100 is elemental, like you can see 5 to 30 fire damage and 75 poison damage that don't scale with enhanced damage. With ethereal you're looking at 2.5k, again 100 of which is elemental. Now if you use Aura, say you use my Mercenary, I actually kind of fucked up in this comparison for visualization's sake. I was using a level 9 might Aura when a level 80-ish Mercenary will have around level 18 Aura. But still, the point still stands. Normal Insight will give 2.3k damage, so that's extra 600. Ethereal will get to 3.5k damage, so that's extra 1k. Additional 400 difference. If we use a stronger aura like fanaticism or basically a more realistic might aura, you're looking at 3k versus 4.6k damage. So it started as a 800 damage difference, scaled to 1000 difference and now it's at 1.6k. So that pretty much for me personally concludes that ethereal items are a pretty massive deal for mercenaries or just weapons in general. And for fun's sake, I decided to run another test and made three oaths that are 100% identical. One is in normal Berserker Axe, another one is in superior, so here you can see um, it has 355 ED instead of possible maximum 340. And the third one is ethereal. So let's compare the damages. Normal 780 to 2.2k, superior 807 to 2.3k, ethereal 1.1k to 3.2k. The differences between normal and superior are barely noticeable, while ethereal is massively ahead. So for comparison's sake, let's keep it simple. Superior is better than normal by 100 damage, ethereal is better than normal by 1k damage. That's 10 times the difference. If we use a low level might aura, with normal weapon it jumps to 2.6k, so extra 400. With superior, 2.7k, which is pretty much the same boost of 100 extra, so a total of 500 boost. For ethereal, it goes up to 3.8k, which is a boost of 600. Once again, it scales better. Finally, let's test it with a higher level damage aura. 
normal is 3.9k so that's a boost of 1.2k superior is 4k which is 1.3k so the same 100 difference and finally for ethereal it's 5.7k which is a boost of 1.9k yet again it scales nicely and makes for an even greater difference i'm not sure a conclusion is even needed here but clearly ethereals are amazing and superior items barely do a thing for you Plus, weapons break far more frequently than armor, so for heavy hitters like Whirlwind Barb or Whirlwind Assassin, having a superior weapon will cause you to bleed gold, which some people find annoying. Regardless of that, if you want those superior goodies, what you should be looking for are face blades, berserker axes, great bows if you want to make a fate for Act 1 mercenary, and then for Ethereal, of course, you want Berserker Axes as well, War Pikes for Breath of the Dying, Freshers and Giant Freshers for Inside and Infinity. Based on my reliable source, other Ethereal Elite pole arms aren't too bad either, and with certain builds, probably the ones already having a lot of increased attack speed like Andes plus Treachery, can outperform Freshers and Giant Freshers, so perhaps pick those Colossus Volges. Bulges, Spears as well. Alright, so now on to the fun stuff and this will be sort of a clusterfuck as magic and rare items overlap frequently. For magic items though, I'll tell you this right away, I don't pick any of these up just because it takes too much time. The odds of rolling them are horrible even though they can improve your setup massively. But regardless, if you're truly into hardcore looting and hoarding, then you should be picking up Magic Monarchs for a potential J mod. I actually have no idea whether this is min-maxing or not. I don't even know how to properly test this one, so I'll just leave it be. Next up, we have stuff that gives you a lot of skills. So a Druid helmet that has 2 to Druid skills plus 3 to Tornado and essentially you can look at this as adding a bunch of skillers into your inventory. So I quickly checked that and it increased my damage by close to 600. Though do keep in mind it's not exactly the same as using extra skillers because it only increases your Tornado's damage and not your secondary damage source like Hurricane. Same goes for Javelins, you can potentially get 6 to Javelins and 4 to increase attack speed to increase your damage by at least a couple of hundreds but this one is a bit rougher comparison because you're not taking increased attack speed into comparison which would perhaps allow you to use Maris instead of High Lords for another plus skill or maybe just some random crafted amulet. Both Javelins and Druid Helmets can be found with these mods as both magic and rare the only real question is if you need this stuff you're sacrificing them for because replacing a Shaco or Titans, that's a tough call. Similarly, Assassin Claws with 3 to Traps and 3 to Lightning Sentry, roughly 500 to 700 damage increase. Now, unlike with Druid Pelts, ideally you can also roll attack speed, resistances, more plus skills to other useful skills like Fade, Shadow Master, Fire Blast to take care of immunities. And lastly, Rare Claws can roll some insane mods for physical damage like Enhanced Damage over 300%, Attack Rating per level, Max Damage per level, and 2 Socks. And with all that, you just have yourself a godly claw that's better than any other unique or runeward claw. Lastly, lastly, Assassins for weapons don't have as good alternatives as Druids for helmets or Javazons for weapons. So a rare claw is the item I see as one of the must pick always. Lastly, 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 if you need 5 or 6 to Lightning Sentry Claws for a trap sin, your best bet is not picking them up, but rather farming Anya for them. Basically, whenever you enter Pindle Skin Portal, Anya shop resets, so you can shop her once every couple of seconds. Though, tread carefully, it will still take you tens of thousands, if not hundreds, of shopping attempts before you'll get your hands on even 5 Lightning Sentry Claws. Moving on, we have Barbarian Helmets, which are used to precast battle orders if you get your hands on 5 or 6 to battle orders. But to be honest, for Barbarians, that bit of extra health and mana is barely noticeable, so personally I never bother with these. 
Next up, we have circlets, diadems, and tiaras. The magic ones are only useful for boazons, pretty much because you can roll a shit ton of health or faster run walk and free sockets. The idea behind this is that boazons don't really work well with crushing blows, so something like G phase isn't as useful. And then plus skills, of course, are pretty useless for boazons as well. So there's kind of no good alternatives in terms of helmets, like unique or ruinworthy helmets for boazons to wear. So instead, what you want to do is get a free socketed helmet, slap triple, 15 increased attack speed and 40% enhanced damage jewels into it, and you've got yourself a pretty good deal. Now, rare circlets, tiaras and diadems also work, but for a bit different reason. Ideally, you're looking for 2-2 class skills, 20 FCR and 20 all resistances, and then perhaps some stats like strength, dexterity and some health on top. I personally only have one that even comes close, a druid one with 20 FCR and exactly 20 all resistances. Unfortunately, no extra mods, but still it's pretty nice. Then we have Sorceress Orbs. This one was probably my latest finding. You can get something like free to fire mastery, free to fireball and faster cast rate for some extra damage. Same goes for Lightning and Blizzard. But I don't know, personally I think Sorceress doesn't lack damage anyway. So sacrificing something like 20 FCR, 40 all resistance and 10 dexterity from Hodo for those extra couple of skills, I doubt it's worth it. Very similar case actually is with magic amulets and rings, specifically for magic finding. Both amulets and rings can roll up to 40% magic find, but once again you sacrifice a bunch of other options to get that. Either way, you're better off gambling these than picking them off the ground. As for rare jewelry, amulets won't be any good because only three monsters in the game can drop an amulet of high enough item level to be possible to roll plus two to class skills. Of course, that's Diablo, Bale and our lovely Nila Fab. Gambling them though is a completely different story and although they can't roll as good as crafted, I mean they're capped at 10% faster cast rate so you can't get 20% faster cast rate to class skills and 20 all resistances, they can still be pretty good, especially for starting out. Rare rings on the other hand, those I would pick up all and I actually do. 10th FCR, all resistances, magic find, some health or strength, dexterity, top tier shit. Rare gloves of course can be exceptionally good, most known for javazons with 2 2 javelin skills, 20 increased attack speed and other mods like resistances, magic find and stats, but also can be good for martial arts assassin like phoenix striker that benefits heavily from martial arts skills. And of course rare boots as well, faster hit recovery, faster run walk, shit ton of resistances and a decent bunch of magic find. What's not to like? Whew. And with that I'm actually done. <clears throat> oh boy, I actually lost my breath. Okay, I'm finally done with this video, so I turn the question to you guys, do you think I missed anything? Honestly, I'd be surprised, because it feels like I've mentioned just about every single item possible in this game, but whatever, you never know. So, hope you folks enjoyed it, drop that subscribe if you did, drop that like if you didn't, and as always, wish you all a lovely day, and see you guys in the comment section. Cheers! This sounds just like you fapping to this video, could you please stop?